Bona vesprada a tots i a totes. Ja estem un cap de setmana. Val? Com esteu? Suposo que bé. L'altre dia, per Hangouts, es reuniríem uns quants alumnes d'aquest grup i estarem parlant un poc de la cloenda d'aquest curs tan peculiar. Val, us parlo en valencià perquè vull informar-vos del que havíem parlat. Primer que res, aquest curs, per al certificat d'aprofitament, no sé si recordeu que en l'escola d'adults la gent que tenia un 80% de l'assistència més aprovava l'examen i jo veia que els continguts estaven assolits, es donava un certificat d'aprofitament que el que feia era reservar-los la plaça. Per què? Perquè n'hi ha un període de matrícula que fica per a alumnes amb certificat d'aprofitament. I així donarem continuïtat als estudis a l'escola d'adults i als cursos d'escola de gent i temps. Però clar, aquest any he tenit una situació un poc més estranya. Jo vaig a comptar el 80% d'existència de la primera i de la segona avaluació, que la majoria d'alumnes heu tenit. M'agradaria, quan acabem el tema, dir que es queda un tema i ja està, passar un test per assegurar-me un poc que el que jo he anat valorant aquestes dues avaluacions me donin les condicions, diríem, per a dir-vos si passàveu o no al B22. Però, certificat aprofitament, donarem a la gent que hagin continuat el curs un 80% d'assistència a la primera i segona avaluació, però no es dona aquest curs en pensar que no és obligatori que passeu al B22. Si certificat, jo us enviaré un mail, us diré que és un certificat d'aprofitament. Jo te aconselle que tornes a fer un B21, però igual tens el certificat d'aprofitament. Per tant, al curs següent teniu una data específica per a matricular-se. S'eviteu les cues i s'assegureu una plaça en el B21. La gent que té certificat d'aprofitament i jo li recomano un B22, si ho accepta, el repte, té també un certificat d'aprofitament i té una data reservada per a matricular-se al B22. Ho enteneu? I així és un reconeixement a l'assistència que heu estat dut portant aquesta primera i aquesta segona avaluació. El tipus test que vull passar jo és per a jo assegurar-me que aquí li diga que passa al B22 assegurar-me que el meu criteri és ferme i correcte. Això per una banda. Per altra banda, este any no n'hi ha sopar de final de curs, no n'hi ha revista amb els textos, no n'hi ha res. Mos ha tallat per la meitat, diríem, no hem pogut despedir-se dels companys i hem pensat, al bloc de l'escola, penjar uns esfits o unes fotos per a recordar a aquests alumnes que en forma part d'aquest curs tan extrem. Per tant, proposta de les mestres de l'escola d'adults i us anime a que participeu. Ximo, el delegat de la classe, m'ha dit que hi ha cap problema, heu d'enviar-li a Ximo una foto, es la feu en vertical, de cintura cap a dalt, una foto de cadascú, de cada alumne que heu forma part d'aquest curs, li ho envieu a Ximo i així Ximo quan els tinc a tots m'ho enviarà a mi. I farem un vídeo, farem un... m'han dit que penjaran en el blog tipo una orla per a record de cada classe. Per tant, ja podeu, perquè com a màxim, fins al 5 de juny, màxim per a replegar les fotos. Després, molta gent va fer molts escrits, un for and against, covering letters, si algú està content d'una redacció que haig fet, per favor que ja estigui corregida i passada a Word, me ho envieu a mi, que fiqui assunt o revista. O algun escrit sobre la vostra experiència en aquest curs, en el B21. Jo estic un poc trista perquè este B21 estan demanant-lo molt de temps molts alumnes. I jo en guany estava contenta, era un repte per a mi, però estava contenta que per fi ho havíem fet anàvem a intentar-ho, no? I pense que estava així molt bé. I m'ho s'ho han tallat, diríem, no? No hem pogut continuar, perquè essencial, jo pense que sí que hem continuat. Si voleu algun escrit de la vostra vivència o experiència, també s'accepta. Bo, i ara sí que comencem la classe. 
el tema eh, sobre science, ahora continúa el tema de OE, it's a reading comprehension, a listening, and a very tricky mm, grammatical point. Ready? Steady, go. Oh yes, sorry. Mm, it's on your page, ya, yeah? open your books on page 96, 96, ¿vale? Ahora sí. Page 96, everybody. Very good. Then the unit is 10A, the dark side of the moon. Do you remember? Yeah, it was scientific facts. Hmm? I'm very curious, peculiar things to take into account. And we have a reading on page number 96, reading. And it says, you are going to read about four scientists whose efforts to make their discoveries. Oh my God, they are trying to make discoveries and they um, were killed or so they died. Yeah? Read the article and how many of the scientists were killed by their experiments or inventions. Well, we need, I think that because of coronavirus, we realize the importance of science. We need to invest more money in science. So, it says, read these tracts, yeah, then suffering scientists, four scientists who were injured or killed by their own experiments. Four people, we have the first, we have Sir Humphrey Davy, 1778-1829, um, we have Alexander Bogdanov, Thomas Mikli, and Louise Slotting. And we are going to read by, by uh, one by one. And please, while we are reading, we have a lot of scientific vocabulary. Focus on the highlighted words. These ones are going to be the most important for today's class. Ready? A steady go. Please go reading with me. The first one. Sir Humphrey Davy, the British chemist and inventor, had a very bumpy start to his science career. As a young apprentice, he was fired from his job as an apothecary because he caused too many explosions. When he eventually took up the field of chemistry, he had the habit of inhaling the various gases he was dealing with. Fortunately, this bad habit led to his discovery of the anesthetic properties of nitros, ni, ni, sorry, nitrogen, nitro, no, not, nitro, sorry, oxide, oxide, yeah? Unfortunately, the same habit led him to nearly kill himself on many occasions and the frequent poisonings left him an invalid for the last two decades of his life. During this time, he also permanently damaged his eyes in a nitrogen trichloride explosion. Hmm? Nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogeno, glorifido. Huh? The pronunciation is trichloride yeah? explosion. Oh my God, what a disaster. Well, later on we'll focus on this vocabulary, but bumpy, do you know what is a bump? You are in your, driving your cars, a bump, you, you, there are a lot of bumps uh, on the road, me, con altibajos, es, 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 estos bots que fiquen para que es baixos, es coches que se pasen muy de mal, ¿no? Had a very bumpy start. Un comienzo muy con altibajos, muy moviditos, podríamos decir. Well, then, the second two, the second scientist, B, Alexander Bogdanov, 1873-1928. Well, let's see about him. Alexander Bogdanov was a Russian physician, philosopher, economist, science fiction writer and a revolutionary. In 1924, he began experiments with platinum fusion in search for eternal job. 
after 11 transfusions, which he performed on himself, he declared that he had stopped going bald and had improved his eyesight. Unfortunately, for Bogdanov, the science of transfusion was not very advanced and Bogdanov had not been testing the health of the blood he was using or of the donors. In 1928, Bogdanov took a transfusion of blood infected of malaria and tuberculosis and died soon after. Oh my god! Then I think that it's clear blood transfusion, yeah. Donors, a donor, donantes, the sangre, yeah, and two illnesses. Well, see, Thomas Migley, 1889, 1944. Thomas Migley was an American chemist who helped to develop leaded petrol. Lead was added to petrol to make car engines less noisy. General Motors commercialized Migley's discovery, but there were several deaths from lead poisoning at the factory where the additive was produced. In 1924, Migley took part in a press conference to demonstrate the safety of his product, and he inhaled his vapor for a minute. It took him a year to discover from the harmful effects weakened by lead poisoning. He contracted polio at the age of 51, which left him disabled. He invented of systems of bulbs and pulleys so that he could pull himself out of bed. But his invention caused his death when he was strangled by the wolves. The negative impact on the environment of leaded petrol seriously damaged his reputation and he has been described as the human responsible for most deaths in history. Well, I know that you know what is uh, lead petrol, the plomo, the plomb, yeah, wow. And the last one, Louis Lotin, 1910-1946. Louis Lotin, a Canadian physicist, worked on the Manhattan Project, the American project we designed the first nuclear bomb. In 1946, during an experiment with plutonium, he accidentally dropped a container causing a critical reaction. Other scientists in the room witnessed a blue glow and felt a heat wave. Slotin had been exposed to a lethal dose of radiation. He rushed out outside and was sick and then was taken to hospital. Although volunteers donated blood for transfusions, he died nine days later. Three of the other scientists who were present died later of illnesses related to radiation. Wow, then three of these scientists were killed by their experiments. My God, but we need science. Well, what are we going to do now? Now, I would like you to focus on the highlighted vocabularies related to science and medicine because I think that you know the meaning propiedades anestésicas, nitrógeno, transfusión de sangre, malaria, donantes, tuberculosis, plomo, aditivos, polio, Bomba nuclear, una dosis letal. Eso este significado está claro. The problem may be our top pronunciation. Then please, everybody, take your um, text, your reading. And now we're going to listen to these words pronunciation. Five point thirty. 
anaesthetic. Nitrogen. Blood transfusion. Donors. Donors. Malaria. Malaria. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Lead. Lead. Additive. Additive. Polio. Polio. Nuclear. Nuclear. Lethal dose. Lethal dose. Hmm? Then, very important because they are related to science. We are not so used to them, then, and we need them. So, after this reading, we are talking about uh, more than one scientist. And everybody, I would like, because we are going to start the explanation of, the, of this grammatical point, then in your page, on, on, in your page 97, You have this. So, well, so then you have this five grammar quantifiers all, every, bold, etc. So we are going to, to deal with some of them. Then, with a partner, take into account the reading comprehension cycle or Underline, yeah, the white word or phrase. I'm going to read and please think about the reading comprehension. Number one, let's say one, both Sir Humphrey Davy and Thomas Megley damaged their health, or both of Sir Humphrey Davy and Thomas Megley damaged their health. Please cycle the correct one or the one you think about. Very good. The correct one is both because we are saying the people both Humphrey Davy and Bill and and yeah both Sir Humphrey Davy and Thomas Mickley damaged their health. Both and both. Hmm? Ponemos un elemento, un and, y segundo elemento, porque son ambos. Both, Humphrey and Thomas, ya, yeah, Jan ¿Existe both of? Sí. Cuando no decimos los nombres, cuando hacemos un objeto, ¿no? Both of them, los dos, both of them. Como ahí no hay un objeto, ¿no? Utilizamos both, both, and and. Both, María and John. Both uh, my mother and my father, or both sisters, más un sustantivo en plural. Cuando queramos decir un objeto por un objeto, un objeto pronoun, utilizamos both of them. ¿Vale? Then, two, let's say, either Thomas nor their mothers were prepared to admit how dangerous lead was. Or, neither Thomas nor General Motors were prepared to admit how dangerous lead was. Which one do you think is the correct one? Very good. Neither. 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 En el sentido negativo, neither, mirad cómo está el nor, ni Thomas, ni General Motors. Por tanto, neither, nor, ni elemento 1, nor, ni elemento 2. ¿Vale? Y plural. Were prepared to admit how dangerous it was. Let's see number 3. Three. three. Until 1970. All cars use leaded petrol, or every car use leaded petrol. Which one do you think? Well, they, they have very similar meaning. Tiene un significado muy parecido, ¿vale? Este eh, se centra más en el completo group. Este es en es el individual. Con diferencia en el sustantivo. All 
porta plural, all cars y every, como es en el individuo, el individuo, individual, porta siempre sustantivo en singular, every car. Como ahora, en ficat sustantivo en plural, en que ficat all. All cars, todos coches, de que le es todos y cada uno, me siento en el cada uno, eh? singular. For all the blood Bogdanov used in his experiments might have been contaminated, or all blood Bogdanov used might be contaminated. ¿Qué indicaría? All blood es genérico. Toda la sangre del mundo mundial de todos los humanos o específico the, específico all the blood Bogdano used in his experiments no cual se vol, no toda la sangre en general, sino toda la que este científico utilizó en sus experimentos. Como es específico all the blood. ¿Ya? Yeah? And number five, Sir Humphrey Davy was fascinated by all to do, by everything to do with gases. All, de normal, no puede ir solo. All que, all people, all the things, all over the world. Todo, como sustantivo o como objetos, everything. Mm? All no puede ir So, all. I want it. Everything is alright. No, all is alright. ¿no? Como sujeto o objetos, everything. All, le faltaría algo. Was fascinated by all the things, all the facts, all the experiments. ¿Vale? Es como si fuera un adjetivo. Le hace falta un sustante. Well, this was previous to grammar. Además de explicaros, a lo mejor ya un objeto B que tiene un perfecto. Pero, ahora va a pasar a explicar. Then, everybody, go and open your books or go to page 150, 150, and there, on page 150, you have Programma Bank 10A quantifiers. And here you have a very good explanation. Hmm? Programma Bank 10A. This explanation, this drama explanation, is divided into three. The difference between all, every, most, todo, todo y cada uno, la mayoría, lo hago negativa, no, none, any, y diferenciarlos, and both, ambos, neither, ninguno, or either, ¿vale? Esto lo, lo hace así, empieza con estos, luego con estos, luego con estos. Y hay normas, mirad. One. All animals need food. All fruit contains um, sugar. Vale. All tiene que ir seguido de un uh, sustantivo en plural. All animals. O de un incontable. All fruit, all coffee, all money. Vale. Como es incontable, el verbo va en tercera persona del singular. Vale. Entonces, plural o incontable. Si quiero ser específico, all of the animals in the zoo, específico, ¿vale? Tengo con el of the. ¿Mm? All of the animals in the zoo look sad. Puedo poner por delante del verbo. Two, everybody, everything, uh, everywhere, son singulares siempre. Everybody, porque es todos y cada uno. Everybody is, everything is. Siempre tercera persona del singular. Three. Most people live in city. La mayoría. Most people live. Siempre será plural. ¿no? Si quiero, y es genérico. Most people live. Most countries are going through coronavirus. Or are fighting against coronavirus. Si quiero ser específico. Most of the people in this class are women. Cuando es específico, most of the. 
all of them. ¿Vale? For all of us, for most of us, puedo utilizar el of the pronoun. All of us or most of us. ¿Vale? Five, every. Recordaros, la diferencia con all es que every nos centramos más en el individuo. Everyone es todas y cada una, tercera persona del singular. Has a bathroom. I work every Saturday. Rutina. Yo cada sábado me voy a trabajar. I work every Saturday. Todos y cada uno. ¿Vale? Luego pasamos a non, non, en. Is there any milk? Vale, negativa de interrogativa, en. En afirmativa, no, porque ya tiene sentido negativo. There's no milk. Negativa, en. There isn't en. Non era para short answers, respuestas cortas. Is there any food? No, non. There's non. Respuestas cortas. O ninguno de nosotros, none of us, are hungry. Come any weekend. Anyone can come. Esta es la excepción. Any en afirmativa puede tener el significado de cualquier. Come any weekend. Ven cualquier fin de semana. Anyone can come. Cualquier persona puede venir. Es decir, el anyone... Anybody, anywhere, en afirmativa, cambia el significado a cualquier. Hay una canción de, yo, de Robinson um, que dice Anything you want, you got it. Anything es cualquier cosa, cual se va. Cambia el significado. ¿vale? And both, neither or neither, two pronunciations, two correct pronunciations, and either. One. Both, ambos, incluyo elemento 1 y elemento 2, unidos con un and. Both, Pierre and Marie Curie were scientists. Si quiero hacer la negativa, que ninguno, ¿vale? Es neither, elemento 1, nor, elemento 2. Neither Pierre nor Mary was aware, pero son válidos, Aware of the dangers of radiation. Ni uno ni el otro. Y el either de normal va en el or. Marie Curie wanted to study either physics or mathematics. O física o matemáticas. Una opción o una cosa o la otra. Either o. Neither no ni una cosa ni la otra. And both, voy a también ir delante del de verbo both won to emphasize. She and her husband both won, uh, both interested, neither of them, ninguno de ellos. En el of puede ir un object pronoun, neither of them, ninguno de ellos. Both of them, los dos, most of them, la mayoría de ellos. Cuando ponemos el O, ponemos un O. Well, I prepared, here you have my PowerPoint. I prepared, yeah, a PowerPoint. And we are going to see if it works. Well, for you to have a look. Well. Here you have quantifiers. Then we're going to deal with quantifiers. Yeah. All, every, most, both, neither, either, no, none, eh. Then let's start. We start with all. All has general meaning and specific meaning. As general meaning, we can use all and plural nouns, for example, all countries, yeah, plural, todos países, all countries, and also all can be followed by uncountable nouns, for example, 
all food, all coffee, all money, uncountable. Then, for the other meaning, all and plural nouns, all uncountable nouns. But for a specific meaning, we have to explain. Then, we have to use all of the and the plural noun or the uncountable noun. And number four, yeah, all of and a pronoun. For example, all of them, yeah, all of them, or all of the people in the class is specific. Then we have to specify using a plural noun all of the people in the class or uncountable all of the money we um, we got for example and sometimes all plus a pronoun all of them all of us todos nosotros todos ellos and a very tricky sometimes and here we have certain expressions for example all day i've been working all day all day the whole day from morning to night total dia all day i have spent all night preparing a class all the week from monday to sunday and here you have specific um common phrases let's see every every meaning all of our work all of our work yeah then it's um, the group what we focus on the uh, specific every member of our group. Then the difference with all is that every is followed by a singular countable noun. Every a singular countable noun. For example, every country. And sometimes every member of my family, every student in my class. And sometimes we have to focus on these compounds, everyone, everything, everywhere, that they are focused on the specific member of a group, then the verb always in singular. Everyone wants to learn. Everything is possible. As third person singular, then every singular countable noun and followed by the verb in singular common expressions well every day every morning every year every night what's the difference between every day and all day every day is routine monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday all day is the same day from the morning to night. Then take into account this. The next, most. Most means the majority of. Yeah? It has a general meaning and a specific meaning. As a general meaning, most is followed by a noun. Plural noun, normally. Then most people live in cities. But if we want to be specific, we have to include after and the noun. Most of the people here have a Ford car because we are living in Amos Aires, Yeah. Then most people live in cities, general meaning, plural. Hmm? But most of the people here in Amos Aires or around here in Ipayo, have a Ford car and most of is followed by a panel. Most of them work in Ford factory. Is it clear? Then general, most people live. A specific, most of the people here have a Ford car and most of and the panel, most of them work in Ford factory. No non any no has a negative meaning then is followed by a noun and it must be in affirmative i have no time 
non has also a negative meaning and it's used for short answers for example is there any milk no none with a positive verb meaning no quantity zero quantity there is none or a specific none of and a pronoun or a noun none of us ninguno de nosotros speak Italian. And any plus a noun, but it must be in a negative or interrogative sentence. I don't have any time. The negative any, I don't have any time, is the same as I have no time. Let's see. Both, neither either. We start with both. Both is used for two people or two things, used in affirmative, has a positive meaning, and please take it to account, takes a plural verb, because we are talking about two people or two things, and it's obvious plural verb. Then, both and the noun in plural. Both countries are in Europe. If we want to be specific, both of and the object pronoun or plural countable noun which have a determiner. Then both of them or both of the countries are in Europe. Always making the sense that it is a general meaning and after it has a specific meaning. Then I prepare here the summary. Then both the and plural noun or both of the, these or my and the plural noun or both of and an object pronoun, both of us or both of them, always with a plural verb. The next. Oh yes, sometimes it can be followed, it can be uh, used before or after the verb for emphasizing they are both in Europe or they both have a high standard of living. Both usually is used with uh, two elements, both uh, element one and the second one. It's used when something is true for two people or two things. Both my sister and my brother are doctors. And you can use both after an object pronoun. Both my sister and my brother are doctors. I love them both. Yeah? Oh, this is this was here, but I don't know what happened. Neither or neither. Both pronunciations are correct. Neither or neither. Then neither is used to make a negative statement about two people or two things at the same time. Neither has a negative meaning, so is used in affirmative sentences and takes a plural in formal style or singular in formal style. So, Neither is used with a singular countable noun. Neither pairing came to meet the teacher. The mother didn't come and the father didn't come. Then, neither parent came to meet the teacher. Neither dress fitted her. There were two dresses and none of them fitted her. Ninguno, ningún vestido, ningún Padre vino a la reunión, ¿vale? Neither es singular. To neither of, an object pronoun, neither of them, neither parent, neither of them went to school, and neither of the, and plural countable nouns, neither of the boys, ninguno de los chicos, aprobó el examen. A eso se traduyó, lo sabo, pero perfectamente, ¿vale? Se seca tanta tontería, tanta explicación. 
Pertant, resumen, neither para tomar en un sustantivo en singular, neither parent came, neither of the, of this, me es un plural, neither of the boys, and neither of and of the pronoun, neither of them, neither of us. Sometimes, neither meaning not A and not B, ni uno ni la otra. Neither nor is used when something is not true for two people or two things. For example, word. The word is always in the affirmative and normally agrees, concuerda in number with the second subject. Concuerda con el segundo sujeto. Neither, primer sujeto, Mary. Nor, Jim, ni a María, ni a Jim, likes. Como esta es la persona singular, le pongo el singular, likes tennis. Ni a María ni a Jim le gusta el tennis. Entonces el verbo puede ser en singular o plural. Concuerda con el segundo elemento. What does either mean? ¿Qué significa either? O una cosa o la otra. A o B. Una cosa o la otra. Either or. Use when something is true for one of the people or things. Either she was tired or she didn't want to go. O estaba cansada o es que no volía a irme. You can have either coffee or tea. Puede tomar o café o té. O una cosa o la otra. And a summary. Un resumen visual para ahora decir si no aguanta. All and every. Look. All and every. Yeah? All, general meaning, verb in plural. All my family are happy. Specific meaning. All of my family living here. Then all of my family, Kina, living here, have a house. And all of them, object pronoun, are happy. Entonces, all más plural. Every, every es todos y cada uno. Then every, the verb is in singular. For example, every member of my family is happy. Both, look, both, both people, dos personas. Both students are studying now. We can say which elements. Both John and Mary love studying. Y puedo utilizar el both of y un object pronoun. Both of them love English. Most, the majority. This is excluded, yeah? Most, the majority. General meaning, most people live in cities. Plural. Specific meaning, followed by after. Most of the people in this class live in towns. Or also, followed by an object pronoun. Most of them, the people in this class, most of them like living there. And the last one, none, any, neither, none. Cup. None of them are lazy. Neither of them will ever give up studying. And I think that this is very visual, yeah, uh, about what each one means and the use, uh, taking into account grammatical point. I will send you if you want this PowerPoint. So, let's say, this is my PowerPoint, and now you have, after the explanation, to do these exercises. You have to cycle the correct word or phrase. Tell the un circle or subrayar a la opción correcta. Then, I'm going to read it. You pause the video, pare el video. 
y el subrayeu, ¿vale? En casa. En el vídeo parat. Pero que después anema a corregir en clase. Per tant, voy que pareu el vídeo. Mireu que tengo cámaras en la vuestra casa que me avise si estoy copiando o no. ¿Vale? Hace el chiro y digo, pensé que se estaba ahora. Juan, most of or most my closest friends live near me. Two, you can come round at any time, at no time on Saturday, will be home all day. Three, all is ready or everything is ready for the party. Four, most people, most of people enjoy the summer here, but for some it's too hot. Five. Gina goes dancing all Friday night, every Friday night. Six, we haven't got any onions. We haven't got no onions. Seven, any of us, none of us want to go out tonight. Eight, nobody can go. Anybody can go to the festival each week. Nine, I got two very close friends, but unfortunately, either of them, neither of them lives near me. Unfortunately. And the last one, ten, I like to have a bigger table, but there's no room in my kitchen. There is none room in my kitchen. So please pause the video, para el video, o que en casa en calma, la teoría que vos he explicado y a la más correcta. Pedir. So, let's correct. Do you do it? Go feto. Va, no me engañé. Number one. Mireu, my closest friends live Near me. No es la mayoría, son de most amigos íntimos. Pero es específico, quiere explicar el of. Most of my closest friends live near me. No la mayoría de amigos, no, de amigos íntimos, específico. Pero antes de explicar el of. Most of my closest friends. Two, you can come round at any time. Voy a decir a cual se vol, no que a ninguna hora, sino a cual se vol ahora, any time. Sue, en di que el all no puede tener más soles, sino que porta un sustantivo, all the things, all the people. Pero tan como subjecte, ha de tener everything, que en singular is, everything is ready, tot está preparat, tiene que ser everything. All a soles, no. Tiene que picar all the things. ¿Vale? Por tanto, everything es la correcta. O, pues se pica yo ahí. Tiene un sentido general. Por tanto, sols most. Most people enjoy the summer here. La mayoría, most people. Porque es general. Fine. Gina goes dancing every Friday night. Todos y cada uno. Es una rutina. Arriba el vivén es per la nit y todos los vivén es per la nit. Cada vivén es per la nit se va a bailar. No un vivén es todo el vivén es per la nit. No es todo el vivén es per la nit. Que no se va ni, ni, ni a sopar. Pasa el día bailan todos y vivén es. No, es todos y cada uno. Cada semana, cuando llega el viernes, como rutina, every Friday night, Gina goes dance. Six, we haven't, negativa, por lo tanto, en. We haven't got any onions for the soup. Si yo voy a graficar no, tengo que llevar la negativa. Y diría, we have no onions for the soup. Pero con la negativa, we haven't any onions for the soup. Verificar el any negativa y Seven, none of us. Want to go out. Ningú de nosaltres. Com sé que te sentit negatiu? 
que significa we are all broke. No tenim ni un duro. ¿Vale? Por lo tanto, negativo. None of us. En afirmativa, que te hace sentir negativo. Eight. It's free. It's you. Per tant, es gratis. Per la neu. Ningú pot anar al festival o tot el món. Qualsevol persona. Anybody. Anybody can go to the festival. Number nine. I got two very close friends. But, unfortunately, neither of them, ninguno de ellos, de los amigos íntimos, neither, sentido negativo, en oración afirmativa, y como está el of, seguido de un object pronoun, neither of them, ninguno de ellos. And the last one, number 10, I like to have a bigger table, but there's, afirmativa, en decir no, there's no room. In the kitchen. El non sería en respuesta corta. Do you have any room in your kitchen? None. Oh, none of us, none of them. ¿Sí? Pero ahí es afirmativa, sentido negativo, que va a ser no room. There's no room. ¿Lo tenido bien? If you have any doubt, please send me by mail. Ask me on the doubts. And now, The most difficult now. Exercise B. Right tick or cross wrong. And if the sentence is wrong, please, you have to correct the wrong sentences. For example, both Mike and Alan passed the exam. Perfecte. Ambos. Quien? Mike, elemento 1, and Alan, elemento 2. Oh, passed the exam. He neither watches the news or reads a newspaper. No, porque ni una cosa ni la otra es neither watches the news nor reads a newspaper. Es neither ni una cosa nor ni la otra. Then I'm going to let you time. Pause the video, pare el video y de chivo en calma y diga si está right, correcte o wrong. Y si está incorrecte, he obtenido el correcto. Ready? Steady. Go. Pause the video, para el video. And now, after pausing the video, these are the answers. So, number one. It's wrong. Both the kitchen and the bathroom siempre lleva el verbo en plural porque son dos, ambos, la cocina y el cuarto de baño. Need cleaning. Le hace falta una limpieza. La S fuera. ¿Vale? Está mal por esto porque es elemento 1, the kitchen and the bathroom. Lo que estaba mal es el verbo. Que tiene en plural. Need cleaning. Two is wrong. The food wasn't cheap nor tasty. No, no puedo explicar una negativa y un no. La menchar no estaba, no era cara ni feia gust. No era barat ni feia ni 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 gustos. Ni una cosa ni la otra. De tanta afirmativa. Copieu. The food was. Neither cheap nor tasty. Ni una cosa ni la otra. Was, afirmativa, porque neither ya te sentí negativo. Was neither cheap nor tasty. Three, it's perfect. We can go holiday either in July or in August. O una cosa o la otra. Podemos decir either or. ¿Vale? Four, it's wrong. Both, the journey was long and boring. No. Both, parte el subject de esta persona, una cosa y la otra, pero no el, el sustantivo en uh, singular. Es describiendo el viaje, el trayecto, por tanto, the journey was both long and boring. 
Estic unint dos adjectius, long and boring. Ens he de ficar ahir el bou. The journey was bow. Long and boring. Five, it's wrong. It's or James or Karen's early today. Spanglish, total Spanglish. Que espanyola. Es o el cumple de Jane o el cumple de Karen. No, no, no. Estic pensant quin és. No puc recordar quin de tots. He de llegir. Per tant, it's either James or Karen birthday today. O el de Jane o el de Karen. Quan hi ha que llegir, és either, element 1, or, element 1. Then, it's either James or Karen's birthday today. Let's see number six. It's correct. My brother has neither the energy nor the stamina to run a marathon. Esta en afirmativa, my brother has, per tant, utilitza ja el sentit negatiu de neither, ni una cosa, the energy, ni, nor, l'altra. Neither the energy nor the stamina. Very good. Number seven, we had to include both, I can see both, element one, her aunt, and element two, her cousin, came to visit. Both her aunt and her cousin, sujeto, came to visit. Number eight, what was wrong? The order, el orden. We can either, davant de què? O caminar, walk, or take the bus. Delante de la elección, caminar, either walk, verbo, or take the bus. Number nine, the, the wrong thing was the verb. I have two children, but neither of them, ninguno de ellos, neither of the object pronouns, Looks like me. Porque ninguno de ellos puedo cogerlo, ¿vale? Neither of them es ninguno. Cap, ¿vale? Cap de estos dos, ¿vale? Entonces, ninguno de ellos, neither of them, ¿ya? Looks like, ¿ya? Con el frase singular. Neither of them Looks like me. A mi margada, eh? Yo ficaría coma correcta, ¿vale? I have to tell them, but neither of them looks like me. It's correct. Ahora, ¿puedo buscar el chido y ficarle la S? Porque, ¿os acuerdas que ficaba? Puede tener singular o plural. Pero si seguimos la fórmula, me acabo de dar cuenta yo ahora. Si seguimos la fórmula del segundo elemento... También está bien look like. Bueno, si vos te fijas B, también está bien. Look like o looks like. ¿Vale? Porque utiliza neither of them. ¿Vale? Puedo fijar tick, look like, porque cogemos como conjunto children, o neither of them looks like. Los dos son bien válidos. And number 10. My parents love horses. And both of them, recordeuse que cuando yo hice el of, Té un object panel. Most of them, both of them, neither of them. Utilizamos el of y un object panel. Esto es un sujeto, no es un object panel. Then my parents love horses and both of them write everything. Well, this is a very tricky grammatical point. Yo siempre lo he dicho. Que esta gramática... Perquè està en el material, en la mostaca, diríem, mal? Però, sense explicació, té irme natural. És a dir, no vas a fixar-te tu en el verb, en el substantiu. Han d'explicar-los un poc de farragós per això. Escoltar-los, saber que un neither va en el nor, que un either va en el or, mal? 
eh, suficient no, para pensar a word que ficar bien o diferenciar un all de un every en ficar el ver correctamente es suficiente well I'm going to send you uh, a grammar practice a grammar explanation and the powerpoint just in case well the powerpoint is in the video then you don't need it and please focus on that because we have another grammatical point next Wednesday el divendres eh, donarem el últim uh, punt gramatical, ja, ja hem acabat el temari. El meu divendres por, porto un test de repàs, però veneu repassant un poquet i anem a contar vos cosetes. Recordeu eh, passar a Chimo abans del 5 de juny la foto de cintura cap a dalt, vale? per estar ben guapos i guapes, per a aquesta dinàmica que anem a fer, penjar en el blog de l'escola com a record de todos los alumnos de este curso. Bye bye, take care and see you next Wednesday.